let's talk about the quotient rule. See, the way the quotient rule plays out is indeed very similar to the product rule in a way that we're still going to have a dude on top at the numerator. However, unlike the product rule where we have an addition in the middle, now for the quotient rule, we're going to have a subtraction in the middle. And that's it. That's it for the numerator. Now for the denominator, easy. All we have to do is square the bottom guy here. So if the bottom guy here is the function g of x, now square that, we get the square of g of x. That's it. Let me show you how I like to play out the quotient rule. To find the derivative of the quotient of two functions. Okay, let's go. Quotient, right? So we have a quotient. Good. Now, first, before I forget, I like to square the bottom guy at the, new, at the denominator. Okay, because this part is super easy. I might as well take care of it first. Now we're done for the denominator. Okay, cool. So now for the numerator, I know I'm still going to have a dude on top, right? D O O D. Now remember, for quotient rule, we want to have a subtraction in the middle. Okay, remember that. Now, and then just like product rule, we're just going to spell out the two functions side by side twice, right? Twice. So the two functions are f of x, g of x, f of x, and g of x. Okay? Exactly like the product rule. Okay? Now let's apply the do, d o o d. So d, that means for the first term, we're going to take the derivative. Okay? O means for the second term, we don't have to do anything. The O means zero, right? Third term, once again, we have an O, we don't have to do anything. The fourth term, we have another D, so that means we have to take the derivative. And that's it, we're done. Quotient rule, simple as that. Super cool. Now is the time to put quotient rule to good use. In this question, we are differentiating the function y is equal to, well, we have a fraction, right? We have a quotient, the quotient of two functions. On top, at the numerator, we have a polynomial, 4x squared minus x plus 1. At the bottom, at the denominator, we have another polynomial, x cubed plus 5, okay? So to find the derivative of the quotient, of two functions up top, 4x squared minus x plus 1. On the bottom, x cubed plus 5. Okay, let's set it up. Quotient rule means we're going to have a quotient. Now, first thing, simply going to square the bottom guy here. So take the bottom guy and simply square it. Done. We're done for the denominator. Okay? Now for the numerator, we're going to apply do, right? Because remember, for quotient rule, we want a subtraction in the middle. See? Before I forget, I'm going to put it down. A subtraction in the middle. Now, and we're just going to what? Spell out the two functions side by side twice. Okay? So first function, we have 4x squared minus x plus 1. Second function we have times x cubed plus 5, okay? Now, do the same thing twice. First function, 4x squared minus x plus 1. Second function, x cubed plus 5, okay? Now is the time to apply do, right? So check this out, dude. D-O-O-D. D? -O -O -D. D O, O, D. Dude, that is so cool. D, O, O, D. D, O, O, D. Right? Very nice. So let's keep going. So 
So here we just, on the bottom, we have x cubed plus 5 squared. Now, let's take care of the numerator first. We have to take the derivative of this function. So here we have a derivative of what? A polynomial, and that's easy. We simply, whenever we try to find the derivative of a polynomial, we simply apply the power rule, right? Cool. So now, derivative of this guy. So now, um, bring the exponent to the front. So bring 2 to the front times 4, we get 8. Okay? And then x. Exponent minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. Right? And x to the power of 1 is just x, right? So we don't need this guy right here. Okay, now, second guy. What's the derivative of negative 1x? The derivative of negative 1, x, is just negative 1. Okay, next. What's the derivative of positive 1? Well, the derivative of any constant is just 0, right? And 0, we don't have to write it out. Nice. Okay, and then keep going. Times, here we have x cubed plus 5. Minus, okay, just copy this down, because for this we don't have to do anything, right? 4x squared minus x plus 1 times, times, oh, here we have to take another derivative of another function, okay? So now, the derivative of, oh, another polynomial function, easy, we just have to apply the power rule, okay? So bring the power to the front, so we have 3x, exponent minus 1. 3 minus 1, we have 2. Next, what's the derivative of 5? The derivative of any constant is 0. And 0, we don't have to write it out. All right, guys? And guess what? We're done. Quotient rule, we are done. Very simple, right? Okay, and then now we probably just have to uh, clean things up a little, a little. So... Here we have, on the bottom still, x cubed plus 5, whole thing squared. Now up top, let's expand everything, okay? Let's do the FOIL. So multiply this in. ax times x cubed, we have ax to the power 4. Multiply this in. ax times 5, we have 40x. Okay? Now, for your right, and multiply this in. Negative 1 times x cubed, we have negative x cubed. And multiply this in. Negative 1 times positive 5, we have negative 5. Okay? Done. Now, for the second term here, we have to subtract and this whole thing. See, one way to do it is multiply out this whole thing first, and at the end, bring negative sign to everybody. Well, then we have to do that in two steps, right? Because we have to, first of all, multiply everything out first. See, first step. Now, second step, attach a negative sign to everybody, right? See, is there any way we can do it in just one step? Sure, and let me show you the trick. You can bring the negative sign, either bring the negative sign to the first bracket or second bracket, okay? One of them, cannot be both. Because you can, you can bring a negative sign to both brackets. That wouldn't make sense, because you end up having negative times negative, positive. So you lose that subtraction then, right? So that's it. So we either bring, then whenever you have negative in front of an expression, you, you can either bring the negative to the first bracket or bring the negative to the second bracket. Right? And in this case, it's quite easier if we bring the negative to the second bracket because the second bracket, we just have one term. See, the first bracket, if you bring the negative sign to everybody, you have to do that three times, right? Okay, so let's bring this negative sign to this guy. So we have negative 3x squared. Okay? Now let's um, expand everything then. So we take negative 3x squared times positive 4x squared, we have negative 12x to the power of 4, right? Mm -hmm. Now, now bring the negative 3x squared times negative x. See, negative times negative, we have positive again. Uh, so that would be 3x cubed, right? Now, bring negative 3x squared, multiply that to the last term here, positive 1. Then we have negative 3x squared. See? Very easy. We do everything in one step, right? 
Okay, guys. So, to clean things up, at the end, our final answer is y prime is equal to, now on the bottom we have x cubed plus 5 squared. Now up top, uh, for x to the power of 4, we have one term here, one term here. So combine them together. ax4 minus 12x to the power of 4, we have a minus 12, we have negative 4, right? So negative 4, x to the power of 4. Beautiful. Next. Uh, how about for, see, after x to the power of 4 is x cubed, right? So for x cubed, once again, we have two terms. We have negative x cubed here, and we have positive 3x cubed here. So negative 1 combines with positive 3, we have positive 2, right? So positive 2x cubed. Okay? Yeah. Now, Mm. So after cubic, we should have square term. So square term, turns out we only have one right here. So negative 3x squared, negative 3x squared, okay? Next. So after x squared term, we should expect to have x term, right? So for x, oh, once again, we just have one term, 40x, positive 40x. And last, And after x, following that would be what? Just a constant term, right? So do we have any constant term here? Yeah, right here. Just one second, just one term, negative 5. And then we are done.